Hi guys, welcome back to Geeks Wargaming and this is part 9 of my uh, Building the Craft World uh, video series. Uh, so in front of you we have obviously the uh, the Wave Serpents. Um, you know, there's not a lot really you could say about Wave Serpents. You're yeah, probably the best de uh, dedicated transport in the game. Uh, loads of different options for them in terms of their weapons loadout and everything like that. Um, I have decided that I was just going to go with the, the shuriken across all the force as you can see this one's a little bit skew with and that's because uh, I've magnetized I've magnetized everything on these basically so I can uh, I can put all the options on them um, so yeah I'll just show you that basically how I've done it pull the pull the turret off it's probably easier but I've magnetized absolutely everything here so I've chopped the little stub off and then put a magnet on there. I think that is a 3mm, I think it is, but it is exactly the right size to the rest of the sort of the rod that goes through. So you kind of glue the rod in, uh, well, cut the ends off, glue the rod in, and then put a magnet on the end, and the, then that's that's stuck. So I've got a nice sort of flat surface to stick it to, so the, the magnet's not coming off that. Um, I then sort of drilled through... Um, this part and then stick the magnet obviously you can see some of the paints sort of come off as always does with your magnets um, but yeah there's a magnet that just goes all the way through so it's actually two magnets stuck together that then go all the way through to the other side and then that magnetizes into here so I've just basically drilled out the hole that was here and then again put the three by one magnet um, in that side and then that enables it to snap on there and then snap on uh, to the main turret itself so I can have all the weapon loadouts. My current idea for this force is to run it as um, Biotam uh, and they get the uh, re-roll ones uh, for your shuriken so I thought I'd just go as much shuriken, um, shuriken and shuriken cannons as I could um, with that sort of built-in army buff but since sort of planning this um, this force, the uh, Phoenix Rising uh, book has come out. Uh, so there's now a few different options. So I'm not really sure what to do, um, whether to keep it built on or if there are better app options out there. Uh, I know there is the one, I can't remember what it's called, it's Mas Master Crafters or something like that. Uh, it's, it's basically the Salamander one. Um, so I think you can use that one and then combine it with something like minus one to hit or something like that. I don't know. I haven't really looked into it that much, to be honest with you, just yet. So comments down below, whatever combination you, you think um, would work well with my old R4, bearing in mind that you've you've pretty much seen my 1750 there's i think there's one uh yeah one more unit which is uh, my uh, another hq unit um that you haven't seen already um so yeah what how would you run this force um would you run it be or town or would you use some of the other combos or would you just use a completely different craft world i'm completely sort of oblivious i think i've had about two games uh with my eldar so far and uh, it's been as the force has been building up so um, yeah any any advice that you can give me would be absolutely great um, there's a couple of things else on, on this which I'm sure I'm going to get comments about um, one of them is how I've done the shuriken cannon here um, the underslung one um, wasn't really sure uh, with this one because if you look at some of the images that the studio have done it's actually flipped the other way around uh, if you look in the instructions it appears to be this way and then also on some of the box art it appears to be done this way and I kind of I originally put it so it would be the gun was on the other side um, but then sort of putting it this way it actually runs it down the center line of the model completely so it made more sense for me to run it down the center line um, it is it is all magnetized anyway so I can take it off and I can always cut the magnet out and switch it over if it starts to bug me but I actually quite like it this way around so uh, yeah that's it it's, it's staying I think it's staying 
So, uh, yeah, I've just, uh, as you can see, the colour scheme is a pretty basic colour scheme, so it's just all the blue. I've not gone with any markings as such other than just the uh, the decals that you see on there. There's the odd sort of little thing which makes them unique across each model. I've just tried to go with a slightly different decal in places across the four, so you see it there. Playing bumper cars with them all. And then just sort of little, little different decals across them, just so you can see that they're uh, a unique thing. Um, one of the main things which I've changed on these, uh, anyone that's got wave serpents will know this pain. Uh, the base is absolutely shocking. Why Games Workshop decided to do it in that way, I have no idea. Basically, they what they do, if you don't know, is they give you a base. I'll show you here because I've changed mine. Uh, they give you a, a base like this um, with a little... A little rod, uh, like one of the the jet bike uh, sort of thin rods on it, and uh, they just snap or fall off, or you know, they just the balance point isn't that great on them. So uh, I decided to take matters into my own hands, as you can see. So what I've done here is um, I bought some uh, acrylic rods, so clear acrylic rod. Um, there is a uh, I've got sort of quite a. I think I bought it and it was about 30 centimetres. In fact, let me show you how it looks like because it's just here in arm's reach. So uh, this is what I bought. I got it from Amazon. Uh, I think it's for aquatics, so in fish tanks and things like that. Um, it is a pain to cut. <laughs> it doesn't cut very easily. So if you've got sort of a, a low-powered sort of electric cutting tool, um, you can do it... Um, a, I, I ended up just using my um, razor saw uh, that I used to sort of do all my conversions and stuff like that, but it was it was horrible to cut. So um, if you've got a nice sort of saw or something, band saw or something like that, with quite a fine blade, that's probably a better way to do it. But uh, as you can see, it does it does cut quite cleanly. That's uh, that's cutting it with a razor saw and that's usable. Um, so yeah, that's I think it was ten. 10 mil I think it's 10 mil across there but that's more than enough really um, so with that I've then uh, stuck a, a 10 mil uh, magnet on top of there and uh, this is where I had to get sort of a little bit fiddly so you're going to see sort of the underworkings and it's a little bit gross to be honest with you so don't be sick when I show you this but yeah I had to just cut a massive hole out of it so this is you the usual mounting point um, which obviously with cutting a big circle out it I couldn't have put it there so I've had to actually it is slightly off balance with it being there but because there's such a width of this rod and also I've embedded the magnet actually in the hull so I stuck this on last so what I did is basically I, I when I was painting I kept this all modular so I had the main chassis off uh, I had this part separate uh, I glued this bit to the back of this this chassis, and then when I'd painted everything and highlighted everything, I kind of stuck it all together. Um, so that's actually sort of had to build up some plastic with sprue and stuff like that to to give me a mounting point in there. But you can see the magnet in the bottom there, and then that just sort of snaps on quite nicely, and then your model isn't going to be flopping all over the place. That's that's I mean that's not. That's not coming off any time any time soon, is it? So, and even if you do knock it, you know it kind of pings back with the magnet. Uh, so quite happy with how that turned out in the end. Um, I've cut cut them uh, all to sort of different lengths as well, so they they yeah only very slightly, just so they sort of look like they're hovering away at different heights because they, they they wouldn't necessarily be just uniform all exactly same height, I wouldn't imagine. So just try to have that in that force there. So that's my three dedicated transports. That's nearly ten minutes of banging on about dedicated transports I'm sure that is more than enough uh, for anyone but um, yeah really really happy again with how these turned out I think the blue in this color scheme it's just it's just lovely it's one of the, the nicest sort of colors that I've used the crosser for so it just gives them a really nice aesthetically pleasing look shall we say and with the contrasting colors of this uh, rakar flesh and everything like that you wouldn't necessarily think that they would work well together but they they really do so i'm really really happy with how this force is uh, is turning out so let me know in the comments down below what do you think do you think uh, do you like the force is there anything that you would do different with the painting anything you'd add or any advice that you can give me i'm always open to that type of thing but um, that's it that's uh, that's my dedicated transport so the next video will be um 
my HQ choice and uh, that actually excluding the um, the shining spears that you've already seen the uh, the HQ choice actually makes me my 1754 so I think it's 17 no it's not 1750 on the dot I think I'm two points short or something like that but yeah the next video is uh, the HQ so if that's something you're interested in make sure you subscribe and you click the notification bell so you don't miss out on that video and thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one